What, um, what was your first reaction when you heard about the Canadian Bot to Gas? Well, I thought it was a very good initiative because <clears throat> here we have uh, large numbers of people in distress. Uh, the blockade has been carried on since 2007. It's illegal under international law. It's causing severe hardship and suffering. And uh, as human beings, we have a responsibility to respond when you know there's uh, an earthquake in Japan, we people are in distress. We respond when there's an earthquake in Haiti. People are, we respond. Here, people have been under suffering and hardships for since 2007 as a result of this uh, this blockade, and uh, which is contrary, as they say, to uh, international human rights standards. It's been condemned by the. Uh, International Committee of the Red Cross and by the UN Human Rights Council as a crime against humanity uh, in virtue of the Geneva Conventions, uh, the Fourth Geneva Convention. So, uh, as I say, citizens of the world have a responsibility to respond when people are in distress. And uh, when I heard about the uh, Gaza boat, the Canadian Gaza boat, I thought this was. Uh, uh, an excellent response to this distress and that it should be supported. Under the current Canadian government, um, the uh, position of, um, of people coming into attention, uh, the Palestinian suffering becomes more difficult. Um, does that make it uh, more important to have an initiative like the Canadian Boat to Gaza? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, the present Canadian government is. Uh, <laughs> how should I say it, is uh, overwhelmingly on the side uh, of Israel, uh, even uh, in cases where Israel has done wrong in virtue of international law. Um, they don't seem to be too concerned with the standards of international law. They're more concerned with defending Israel no matter what the situation is. Um, uh, so in these circumstances, if we had a government that was uh, uh, responding uh, to the uh, the humanitarian crisis in in, uh, in Gaza, uh, then it wouldn't be so essential that citizens would have to take up the cause, although it, it, that would help too. But in this case, it's even more important that the citizens of Canada show to the world that we don't all agree with our government, that we think something should be done, and so uh, here we have a civil society. Uh, made up of uh, NGOs, individuals, uh, trade unions, uh, professional people uh, coming uh, to the support of uh, the uh, situation in Gaza, uh, despite the position of their government. Um, the, the, the response from the Canadian uh, population, people in general, was, was overwhelmingly supportive, although it doesn't spread far enough as, as per the opinion of organizers, but uh, still uh, get, I mean, managing to collect uh, towards this project about a quarter of a million dollars at this point. Uh, does that give you hope? Well, I, I'm, I'm concerned with the, uh, the, the public opinion in Canada on this issue because public opinion is, uh, is brought about by what is uh, in the media, what's in the press, and, and I, Unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the general press, uh, I think, doesn't give a very balanced uh, position on these issues. Too often, it, um, it uh, puts forward the positions of Israel and not enough attention, or uh, very often, uh, the Gazans and the Palestinians are, uh, are demonized uh, as if they were always bad guys. Uh, uh, causing all the trouble. And we know that the basic cause of this co very horrible conflict is the continuing occupation of Israel, of the West Bank, uh, Palestinian territory, and not only occupation, but the building of settlements in complete contravention of international law. And as a matter of fact, it's, a, it's, it's a, an example of aggression against another territory. Um, it's been condemned. Now, that, that cause leads into uh, you know, conflict on both sides, and unfortunately, the killing of innocent citizens, killing of innocent Israeli citizens, and killing of innocent um, uh, uh, Palestinian citizens, Gazans. 
the only thing is that the Israelis are much more efficient at killing than the Palestinians uh, in, the, uh, in the events of uh, December 2008, January 2009, Operation Castlet. You know, uh, I think not nine, four or nine Israelis were killed, but 1,400 uh, Palestinians. It's because the Israelis have one of the most powerful military forces in the world. And with respect to the blockade, one must ask the question, uh, the Israelis object to the, say the ra rationale for their blockade is to prevent weapons going into Palestine. Uh, but who is blockading the, the massive uh, uh, <laughs> shipment of uh, weapons into Israel? Massive shipment of very sophisticated weapons. I mean, there seems to be a double standard. It's all right to blockade uh, weapons going into Palestine, but it's not, uh, nobody would think of blockading uh, the, all the weapons that are going into Israel. Or establishing a no-fly zone over Gaza to prevent the Israeli Air Force from, from shelling well, the... Well, there's a double standard and hypocrisy here. Uh, it's the same. I was going to say it's the same with the nuclear weapons issue. Uh, in, in other words, it seems all right for Israel to possess nuclear weapons, but not for their neighbors. I mean, I think it's a horrible thing that any side should have nuclear weapons, but but it's this double standard which, uh, which upsets people. Um, the Canadian Boat to Gaza is a peaceful mission. It's not, it's not uh, violent in any way, but it still comes with risks to the people that are going to be on the boat. Um, what do you think uh, about the, the, the comments that would say it's not logical, it's not right to subject people to a risk? Well, I mean, Sometimes in the pursuit of human rights and democracy, you have to take risks. We see what's happening now throughout the Middle East and North Africa. People finally saying, we want the basic uh, human rights, we want basic freedoms, and they're risking their lives. I, I would hope, I think some of the measures that the Canada boat is taking with others in the flotilla to have inspections, in other words, independent neutral inspections beforehand, make the uh, uh, make the results of those inspections known publicly, including to Israel, that there are no weapons aboard, that it's simply humanitarian supplies, I, I think is a, is a, a very important step um, uh, to try and prevent uh, violence against these, uh, these people who are really only bringing humanitarian assistance uh, and they're not trying to uh, uh, increase the military conflict in any way. I can't let you go without asking you uh, about what happened in rights and democracy, especially that's related to the situation in Palestine and the, the, the timing of the flotilla that's coming in the same, uh, in the same time period. Uh, does that bring anything that you would want to say about the, the, the current situation in, in Canada here? Well, it's, it's all connected, as a matter of fact. The, uh, you know, the, the government, the Harper government appointed people to the board of directors of uh, rights and democracy to the extent that the, these new appointments became the majority on the board. And uh, they were extreme, uh, I'd say extreme Zionists. Um, really, their principal goal was really to defend Israel no matter what Israel did. They, uh, there were three small grants to human rights organizations. Uh, recognizes independent uh, human rights organizations, uh, one in the Gaza, one in the West Bank, and one in Jerusalem, and an Israeli one, Bet Salem. And they thought, uh, because these uh, human rights organizations had from time to time criticized Israel for the human rights violations, that they, those grants were should be canceled. I might say that those groups have also criticized uh, Palestinian abuses of, of human rights from time to time. They, they, they on the whole, they're balanced uh, in their uh, in their approach. But uh, as a cause of this conflict uh, at Rights and Democracy, uh, the former president, Mr. Beauregard, in a dispute with these people on the board, died of a heart attack. And that, uh, you know, I appeared before a parliamentary committee about this matter with Ed Broadbent, the first president. I was the second president. And we're still following it very closely. I mean, it's a, it's a real farce, if I can use that word, uh, of the way these people are running and what was uh, supposed to be an independent, neutral human rights body, uh, not following the 
policies of the government, but uh, committed to speaking out on human rights no matter who it was, whether it was Canada or the United States or Israel or the Palestinian territories or Egypt or Algeria. If, uh, if someone violates international standards, a human rights group is supposed to speak out. I, I give the, I say it's equivalent to an umpire in baseball. The ball is a ball, he says it's a ball. It's a strike, it's a strike. He doesn't, <laughs> that's his job. And the human rights organization has no allegiance to the flag of any country. Their allegiance is to the standards of human rights. And they're supposed to objectively call it as they see it and not uh, be interfered with politically. Thank you.